I was linearly progressing in my younger years, compound movement strength, and overall, I feel like Austrian played a big role, and I was able to recover my natural testosterone to 600 plus with a minor PCT after the Austrian cycle. What is up, everyone? It's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's is more simple. It's more People on code Russo. Yes, more spritz, intelligent elephant, Oregon. There's your noises, but you gotta buy it to smell it. Today, welcome back to education. All right, so I haven't featured Austrian. I'm here to feature Austrian on this Friday. Run up the like button so more people see the truth about Austrian. I'm going to be featuring only the history out of the Anabolics 11th edition, but this is going to be just my knowledge of my experience with Austrian as well as people around the world DMing me at Russo Lifts, following me there, their experiences with Austrian. So Austrian, when you think of it, MK2866, it's called Enobo Sarm as well. This is the most tried and true underground SARM in history to ever hit the market, has the most lab rats taking it around the world and giving you a big data pool to see what Austrian does. The University of Tennessee filed a patent for Austrian in 2001. It was then bought by GTX Biotechnology Pharmaceuticals and received a $500 million plug from Merck. It was, however, discontinued in around 2010 after, again, this SARM was proven to be a lower iteration, aka they innovated again and made even more selective SARMs in LGD-43. 33 was really looking to be like the SARM that the medical community liked the most for muscle wasting diseases such as cancer, all sorts of things to again offset the deterioration of the body via activating skeletal AR and shrinking prostate sizes as well because SARMs are more like SERMs, selective estrogen receptor modulators. SARMs act through the androgen pathway. They do not convert to estrogen or DHT and have a much higher binding affinity to the androgen receptor to testosterone, AKA if you would inject testosterone and take 30 milligrams of Austrian, that 30 milligrams of Austrian is 100% going to bind, leaving a lot of testosterone you inject to spill over into estrogen or DHT and not bind because the binding affinity is so good of Austrian. You need to take this into consideration when you're forming hybrid cycles, mixing SARMs and steroids, that these binding affinities of these SARMs are insane. They are super strong as far as an anabolic agent and that they have virtually no conversions after they're done. So they're not converting to dihydroosterine or there's no aromatization of them at all. However, your natural testosterone can get booted off your androgen receptors and cause higher amounts of DHT and estrogen conversion. Once your body picks up on that, it's gonna suppress down. Austerine really highlights itself in extremely low dosages, right? We have a SARM that in such low dosages can produce such a crazy effect with the study being in the anabolics edition, being a 3% body mass increase in 12 weeks with only three milligrams per day. That's how crazy this stuff is, leading to only hormonal suppression, not shutdown. So if you inject Trembolone or take another SARM like S23 or take DECA, for example, your gonads, your balls are gonna shut, boom, completely off. Austrian, if you do it at a low enough dosage and you have a very well-functioning HPTA endocrine system, you could add that in there. It binds with skeletal muscle AR. Your body only suppresses down and it recovers super easily. This is what I used to do. I've Andrew throughout my first Austrian videos, the OG Sarm Goblin. This is what I used to do was I was afraid of dipping my feet in fully with enhanced bodybuilding. I wanted to mess around. When you think of the beginner cycles, you think of like tried and true Anivar only, testosterone only, or these SARMs were the new cutting edge things that I wanted to test out that no one tested out and no one really knew. And definitely no one video documented it. Obviously times have changed nowadays, but that was my thought process was the Austrian 
wasn't going to fully shut me down. I could get some sort of enhanced gains benefits, not compared to injecting grams of steroids, but I was linearly progressing in my younger years, compound movement strength, and overall, I feel like Austrian played a big role, and I was able to recover my natural testosterone to 600 plus with a minor PCT after the Austrian cycle, meaning I could have done the Austrian cycle, completely walked away, kept the results, recovered my balls, my balls could have taken over the new skeletal muscle AR demands of the restructuring of my architecture. And I could have literally walked away completely unscathed. Fine. Obviously, as my social media took off, I got more crazy as a lab rat and we got into more powerful SARMs. But Austrian is really one of those tried and true ones at low dosages that's super non-toxic, doesn't suppress your HBTA, and overall is a very good mood booster. The thing I always go back to with Austrian is the mood boosting capability. Each androgen is going to impact each individual differently, but I can say trend makes me fucking antisocial, rad makes me snappy and angry, S23 gives me crazier bipolar episodes, Austrian makes me happy, Austrian puts me in a positive headspace, testosterone makes me feel more calm in my episodes, makes me feel more mellow, more confident in my episodes of controlling my frequency. My understanding of my frequency allows me to pick pick out and for me personally, what it does. And I can say that Austrian is one of those ones where I would take it for the mental benefits alone. Fuck the muscle gaining and the bone density increases and not binding with the prostate and all the other perks of it. The mental impact alone of Austrian has people going back to Austrian just for the mental impact. It's really that good. Another one that's really good with mental impact is Dianabol as well. I know people who take Dianabol for their job interviews. Take a bunch of Dianabol right before they go into their job interview. They're much more confident in the job interview. The Austrian puts you in a positive, uplifted headspace where Rad puts you in a negative, horrible headspace. Austrian for that reason is super, super good on paper when it comes to nootropic benefits. Now let's go into dosings. So all the dosing studies are around one, I think to 10 milligrams, 12 milligrams a day. Dudes are taking 50 milligrams a day. At 50 milligrams a day, in my opinion, anything above 30 milligrams a day, you're going to risk full shutdown. You are going to have liver toxicity, especially gonna have liver toxicity toxicity at 50 milligrams a day. You cannot use the data that showcases its selectivity its selectivity towards skeletal muscle AR because they're testing it at that dosages. There's going to be spillover binding. SHBG crash is another thing I want to talk on in these higher dosages. Sex hormone binding globulin is what transports your hormones around to stop a high inflammation environment. SARMs are not recognized by sex hormone binding globulin and cannot be transported around like your natural hormones. It's very important to get blood work after to check your sex hormone binding globulin to see if it's crashed, because if it's crashed, then there's random binding occurring, shit's not getting transported around, and overall is a recipe for disaster as far as needing to get off the SARM and recover your sex hormone binding globulin by using HCG, HMG, or RFSH continuously until your sex hormone binding globulin recovers. So that's something that the little TikTok nerds don't talk about at all is the SHBG crash, which I've mentioned multiple times. I'll have Andrew throw up a video around SHBG. Austerine, like I said, is super toxic. It's not good on cholesterol like any other synthetic androgen. So you have your HDL in quotation marks, good cholesterol. You have your LDL in quotation marks, bad cholesterol. We will see a skew of HDL going lower while LDL is rising. So that is something to note. The liver toxicity is something to note. As far as kidney impact, I've never had any kidney issues with Austrian. However, with the underground market, it's always a risk you're not getting what you're paying for and austrian is never going to be proved entirely for use right we have lgd 4033 and other new age sarms getting closer to be in the medical standard but austrian was the forefront of like hey you know s4 is great but it's causing cataracts it's causing people to go blind the vision side effects what's going on there austrian was the first one 
to really have very minimal side effects at low dosages and really highlight what a SARM is all about. I think the takeaway from this is that Austrian isn't the super powerful oral that's gonna blow you up so you look massive on social media and gonna look like a pro bodybuilder. It's not that. It's a cognitive it's a cognitive mood enhancer. It definitely hardens your look. You'll get a harder look. So if you did it on testosterone, you get a harder, drier look. You get better density. You get better strength in the gym. You get more vigor in the gym. And overall, if you did it in a low enough dosage, even as a full natty, you would probably cause suppression unless your levels are already like 400, then I'll dip them to 200. If your levels are 800 to 600, then I'll dip them to 450. And then after you come off, they'll most likely return to where they were because your HBTA is in flatline. Flatlining the HBTA is the issue. However, I recommend always having a PCT of enclomiphene and Novadex to get off this cycle and overall to just watch the dosage because because I'll give out my dosages personally. All the videos of me on YouTube with Austrian was 30 to 50 milligrams a day for me to get those looks. If you read online, most people do 10 to 20. If you read the medical data on what's determined in quotation marks as safe, it's one to 10. So take that into consideration. The last thing I'll touch on is females. Females tend to enjoy Austrian. However, it tends to cause them to have a watery look compared to males. I don't know why that's occurring. There could be multiple things that are occurring as far as impacting multiple cascades and variables. But I wanted to note if a bikini girl is watching this, I've had bikini girls come at Austrian in, they get a watery look, which is most likely the binding affinity of Austrian booting off all their androgens at the AR, causing an even higher influx in estrogen, which leads to more water retention. But I don't know. I'm just guessing. I'm not a genie. I don't know. But I've seen that happen multiple times. I haven't seen viralization side effects or any hyper masculinizing side effects out of all these women that have talked to me who are using Austrian in their bikini figure competitor preps. It's very promising that it's behaved similar to Anovar and the fact that Anovar is very anabolic, not very androgenic. Austrian seems to exhibit those same characteristics of being very anabolic, very little androgenic side effects. For a woman, I would deem this as a P, I don't, I don't deem women going on PDs, but for women, I would deem Anovar, Austrian, very good picks as far as adding in something that's going to help them other than obviously growth hormone, which doesn't impact them having facial hair, ruining their voice permanently, facial structure changes, any of that. I feel like Austrian and Anovar are both something that each individual female can look into, play around with and figure out which one they like better. But overall, you are dosing Austrian mig per mig way lesser than Anivar, which shows a lot. There's a ceiling with Austrian, right? At 40 milligrams a day, I don't really see much benefit going higher. I've went higher than 50 milligrams a day for a couple days just to see what happened. Overall, my liver was hurting like crazy and I decided to cut it out and then had to run Tudka to flush out my liver. So wouldn't recommend it. It's not like, oh, just take it and you'll be fine. If you increase the dosage, you'll get more power out of it. There seems to definitely be a bell curve with these SARMs of like, hey, if you wanna get really fucking big, just do grams of fucking gear and deal with the side effects. It's a side effect. I just voice cracked. If you want something mild, you wanna be half natty, you don't wanna fully dip your feet fully in, spend tons of money on gear and ancillaries and all this shit, then a little hybrid SARM setup or a SARM solo setup could be good. Another thing I wanna mention is estrogen E2 crash. So Austrian can lead towards an estrogen E2 crash because you are choking out the natural testosterone via the SARM and the SARM is not converting to estrogen to make up for that and overall could lead towards an estrogen crash, which you need to build muscle. So you may need to add something in like in clomiphene to keep that estrogen conversion there, but I would prefer you add something like HCG in. But if you're afraid of needles like a pussy, I get it in clomiphene. But keep that in mind that you could have an estrogen crash and most of the side effects aren't from the androgen pathway. It's from the estrogen pathway. If you fucking up the estrogen pathway, which then fucks up the serotonergic pathway, everything in between and overall, I wouldn't recommend going over 10 weeks of a SARM solo cycle. At eight weeks, I always noticed the estrogen crash. I became flat as fuck. My libido got impacted because I personally have better libido on higher estrogen. And I just noted that, wow, I'm not making any progress in the gym. Feels like I'm flat. When I PCT and I go on to 
clomiphene, my muscles instantly fill out, my estrogen returns to normal, and I cognitively feel better. So don't be pushing these SARMs for extended periods of time. I remember like Andrew, the first SARM salesman that hit the market. He was such a piece of shit. I, th I, feel, like, I feel like people know who I'm talking about, my OGs. He would recommend a 16 week SARMs only cycle with like every product, obviously, he's got to sell all of it. And he had this, this shell company in Russia that he would send all his money to. And he cashed out. He never got caught. He cashed out. But don't be doing that. Don't go over eight weeks. It's actually really cool that you can have an oral that you can run that long and it not be super toxic. Go try and run Anadrol for 10, 12 weeks. I know there's people that do it, but they're not feeling good. Austrian at the right dosage, you won't notice anything and you will be getting tons of cognitive mood benefits, a little bit of density, hardness in the gym. Obviously strength's gonna go up, but overall this is a low toxicity option at the right dosage. And I would deem this one of the safer SARMs when it comes to the amount of people who have messed around with it and not had extreme complications from it. And when I mean extreme complications, I've already featured which I'll have Andrew throw up. Permanent eyesight damage from S4. This was the evolution of S4. So I hope you guys learned something. Please like the video. I will see you guys in my next one.